The province of Gansu holds a cultural exhibition every summer in Lanzhou. One of the highlights is the unique folk costumes of the Yugu, one of Gansu's ethnic groups. Ko Chui Ling is officially listed as an inheritor of the Yugu folk costume craft. Every year, she exhibits her costumes in the hope of attracting investors. After a day of waiting, Ko finally attracts some interest. Things do not turn out as smoothly as Carr expects. By the end of the exhibition, the organization that expressed interest in cooperation has failed to show up. Kerr's hopes have come to nothing. Business at our girls' bar is not good. Ten years earlier, this accomplished singer left his hometown in the Mount Chilian region to open a Yugo style bar in the city of Jiangya. Argur and his girlfriend have known each other for five years and will be getting married soon. Argur is both the boss and the singer at the bar. He puts on his Yugu costume before he goes on the stage. He considers this ritual to be more important than singing. Xiao Li and her family are from the city, but our girl longs for a traditional Yugu wedding on the prairies. <laughs> Ka makes Yugu costumes and crafts. The Yugu population is small. There are only 13,000. More than 90% live in Sunan County. It's the only Yugu autonomous county in China. is also known as Yogor. They once belonged to the Uyghur Muslim people.
Today, Agur and Xiao Li are off to Sunan to have a Yugu costume made for Xiao Li. Traditional Yugu costumes have gradually disappeared from everyday life. Young Yugu people will only have a traditional costume made when they get married. The most special and valuable part of the Yugu costume is the braiding seen here, a special form of decoration. To wear this braiding is the heart's desire of young Yugu brides to be. Gotcha Plenty of red coral and ornaments are needed to make a traditional braiding. There have been many orders recently, and Kerr's shop has run out of all the materials needed. She and her husband travel 400 kilometers to Xining to replenish their stock. <sighs> The red coral often found in the market is usually just dyed white coral. The authentic red corals are expensive and hard to find. The ornaments sold in Xining Market cater to the ethnic groups of northwest China. They are produced in the coastal region of the southeast. During the golden age of the Silk Road, during the Tang Dynasty, luxury ornaments such as red coral and lapis were brought in from central or western Asia. Back then, the Uyghur people, ancestors of the Yugu, controlled the route through the Hershey Corridor into China. They played a key role in facilitating trade between East and West. After a long search, Kerr finally finds real red coral at a small corner stall. After a busy day, Kerr has everything she needs. Her supplies will be delivered to her home along a highway that was once part of the Silk Road a thousand years ago. It is the last days of summer. Agur and Xiao Li are discussing the arrangements for their traditional wedding with friends and relatives. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
and Mei Ying is one of the few shepherds who still knows the requirements of traditional weddings. Ang Mei Ying's grandfather was the last chieftain in the Yugu ethnic group's long history. The family descends from a Mongol emperor. In the 13th century, Genghis Khan conquered a Uyghur tribe that lived along the borders of what are now Gansu, Qinghai, and Xinjiang provinces. In the period that followed, there was an intermarriage between Mongol and Uyghur families. These new tribes were to be led by the descendants of Genghis Khan. The Yugu people of today are the offspring of these clans. Mm. Mei Ying has told Arga everything needed for the wedding. Arga's biggest challenge is getting a horse caravan to carry the newlywed and their relatives. He's forced to seek help from friends. <laughs> has ordered the braiding. The work is complex and everything is made by hand. A rainbow is embroidered with colorful silk threads on a piece of cloth. This is just the first step. For nomads like the Yugu, the rainbow signifies rain and abundant grazing land. There is an ancient Yugu saying that urges people to go towards the rainbow. After it's completed, red coral beads are strung and sewn together from the base. This arduous task requires two weeks of delicate sewing by a patient seamstress. A visitor from a distant land arrives in Sunan after traveling a long way to meet Kirchui Ling. Matt Lyash is a folk art expert from Hungary. <laughs> About 200 years ago, a Hungarian historian wrote that the people of Hungary originated in the Far East. The Hungarians are believed to have a historic relationship with the Yogor, the people known today as Yugu. Matt is an expert in folk art patterns. He is here out of a desire to trace his people's origins in the Far East. Népművészetnek a gyökereit keresem. Hát mondta, hogy szeretnék minél több hiteles képanyagot elvinni Magyarországra, hogy megmutatni, hogy milyenek voltak az ősi jugur ruhák és minták, hogy utána mi tudjunk keresni, hogy van-e valami hasonlóság, tehát találunk-e hasonló dolgokat a magyar 
Matt soon discovers valuable designs from Kerr's collections and wants to take a photo. Hearing that he can't take photos leaves Matt a little disappointed. Jó, hát mondd, ez, ez nem erőszakoskodás, meg, meg ő mondja, hogy megjelenik a könyve. Én annak nagyon örülök, de, de miért rossz az neki, hogy Magyarországra én elviszek néhány fényképet tízezer kilométerre ide, és a kutatók megnézik a magyar mintákkal, tehát miért nem engedi le fényképet? Tehát, hogy nem elég a lelkesedés és a jó indulat, hanem hogy, hogy, hogy a hagyományokat muszáj mélyen megismernünk, hogyha azt meg akarjuk újítani. Aga's order is a braiding in a chieftain style. The lower half is made from sweet cowhide. Kerr's daughter, Nan Nan, is a recent graduate of a design school, and Kerr is teaching her how to engrave the leather in Yugu style. But Kerr wants her daughter to continue with her higher education and earn a master's degree so that she can become a teacher at a university. As their wedding day approaches, Agur and Xiaoli return to finalize the details. <laughs> Agur is holding a traditional Yugu wedding, and his friends are excited and eager to help. Agur buys several lambs to treat his guests on the special day. Matt's visit is coming to an end. He organizes a lecture before he leaves and invites the Kerr family to attend. Akkor amit vele csinálunk, értéket fogunk teremteni. Tehát nem értéktelen dolgok keletkeznek, hanem értékes dolgok keletkeznek. A hagyománynak az az egyik lényege, hogy ezt az erőt én föl tudom használni. Annak érdekében, hogy hogy én és a környezetem, az emberek és az emberiség az előre menjen. És a külvilág minél zaklatottabb, annál fontosabb nekem a hagyomány ahhoz, hogy egyensúlyban tartsam magam. Matt's obsession with tradition moves Kerr. After the lecture, Kerr invites Matt to her home and shows him almost her entire collection. She also allows him to take photos. The braiding ordered by Aga is finally ready. Both Aga and Xiao Li are pleased with it. <laughs> Autumn is beginning to make its mark on the region. It's the day of the wedding, and the caravan of horses has been put together with the help of Argo's friends.
but it's a far cry from the hundred horse caravans of the past. Horses have gradually been replaced by cars and motorcycles over the years, so it's quite an achievement to have created a caravan of 20 horses. The wedding guests must be dressed in traditional costume in accordance with the wedding ritual. Xiaoli is in the new tent getting prepared with the help of the maid of honor and one of the singers. An Mei Ying's sister, Mei Fang, is also a famous folk artist who lives on the prairie. During the Tang Dynasty, Uyghur costumes and horses were fashionable among the nobles in the capital city of Chang'an. In the past, the Yugu's ancestors were trendsetters. The bridegroom's caravan must circle the bride's tent three times before leaving. The singer performs traditional songs for the wedding guests. A nomad's attitude towards wealth is different to those who dwell in towns and cities. For the Yugu, the braiding represents everything the family has, except for its sheep and cows. The bride must display the wealth of the whole family. The most important rite in a Yugu wedding is reciting the narrative poem Sha Te. It tells the history of the Yugu from the beginning to its eastward migration 500 years ago. The wedding proceeds smoothly. A full Yugu wedding is rarely seen on the grasslands now. In the future, there may come a day when the rainbow costume will disappear and a traditional Yugu wedding will no longer be witnessed. <laughs>